Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're not already subscribed to the Gamers Box, then like the video, do all that amazing stuff. Thank you all the people that have joined on the live stream we did the other day, the Fight Talk Show. I know there was a bit of lag issues, but I'm grateful for you guys for first of all joining in. A bit frustrated when the whole thing just keeps crashing, crashing, and crashing. But you know, we're, 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 I think we're almost there in terms of resolving it. Okay, so hopefully this Friday we'll get another of the Fight Talk Show live, and this will be probably the Liam Williams versus the Chris Schubert Jr. fight. So subscribe to the channel. Post notifications on and like this video, okay? So, with regards to Dilly White's scenario, we learned from Friday that the first bid was won by Frank Warren. Some people are saying Klarna, some people are saying Monzo card. He bought it on credit, Wonga.com, payday loans, man manager using all sorts of funds to facilitate this bid, okay? But regardless, he's won the bid and he will be staging, you know, arguably one of the biggest British fights in a while, probably in the last decade, definitely. So, last decade, uh, it's bigger than the, is it bigger than the Joshua White, the first fight? Yeah, I think it was. I think, I think it'll be, definitely. I think it'll be, but regardless, this is, this is a huge, huge, huge fight, but I'm a little bit apprehensive because I'm not hearing anything from the Dillian White camp and this is what's causing me some alarm, alarm and concern. Dillian White is probably one of the most world quality heavyweights you're going to see in this day and age. And the fact that he's completely silent when arguably he, he received his biggest ever payday of his career, I'm a bit worried. I want to know what's, what's going on, what what's happening behind the scenes with the arbitration. Why, why is he proceeding with the arbitration? That's a great question because he, you know, he's received seven to eight million pounds in terms of uh, uh, his split of the fee so personally like i i'm i'm very confused as to what's going on with regards to team white i understand that imagine you're paying the sanctioning fees for the governing body you're paying interim man, interim um uh, sanctioning fees which is probably a little bit higher than the average one imagine you're paying that and all of a sudden they put you in a position where you're earning less than the what's, what what they what the WBC ruling has as the mandatory challenger split. It, it, it makes it difficult for you to process that and proceed with it because that means that the WBC owes the white right money, especially for the sanctioning fees, the extra sanctioning fees. So and apparently I heard this, so don't quote me. That if the split is changed. From the arbitration or whatever did a white win if he wins the arbitration that whatever fee that they agree on that will be literally forked out from the wbc's back pocket so this will come from like tyson fury's pot this will come from the wbc's pot which i'm not too mad at it i'm really not too mad at it to be fair they deserve it it is what it's they've been pushed around it for all this time they deserve it man and um, but why why he's proceeding with the whole arbitration is beyond me Regardless, but hopefully they get that all scheduled that all, whole fight next. Apparently, according to Keith I D E C, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. I D E C, E D E C. I don't. Now nah, that sounds a bit mad. But apparently, him who he is a, a a I think he's a senior writer for the boxing scene dot com. He's written or he's reported that according to him. According to the WBC, Dillian White has until February the 21st to agree or to sign the actual um, contract for the Diddy, for the Tyson Fury vs Dillian White fight. And he's got, I don't know what happens if he doesn't hit that deadline, but apparently they, got, they gave him a deadline to hit. And I'm just sitting there thinking, hold on a minute, um, it, you know, if this is true, why are the WBC given a deadline for when Dillian White should sign the contract? when? The reason why he's in an arbitration is because of the whole ruling and the split and, and the whole debacle of the WBC. 
So I don't, I'm not sure whether they, the WBC have any control or power in this circumstance here. It's for the arbitration to rule. And you know what? The arbitration, the deadline for the arbitration to be over, to be resolved is the 31st of March. Or is it? Is there a 31st of March? I think it's 30th of March. Correct if I'm wrong. Is there a 30? I think there is a 31st of March. Yeah, 31st of March is the last day for them to agree something with, you know, with the, with the WBC and etc. So deadlines yeah throw them out the window okay but hopefully that fight gets announced very 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 soon okay and i know joseph parker will probably be giving um tyson fury intelligence on how did white fights his power i compared it to tizora and said you know what he's like tizora but he does this and this differently and basically he swings at this angle he can give all the breakdowns to team fury and would be a kind of informant to them so can't wait for this fight overall Another fight I'm looking forward to is the AJ Usyk fight. But what is ex what exactly is the hold up? Where's the venue going to be? When um, is that fight going to take place? Okay, but more importantly, this is the question that I like to be answered first. Who is AJ training with? Who is AJ training with? Because that is what's caused to be a lot of concern. I know AJ still in Watford. I know AJ still in England instead of Watford. You know the whole shebang, and unless they flew a trainer in last minute. Unless they flew Robert Garcia in or all these other trainers in, who's training him? Who's training him? And do you know what? It's got to be somebody new school. It's got to be Robert Garcia because I can't imagine, for the life of me, someone like a Eddie Reynoso or somebody from an old school background to do a training session over Zoom. I can't imagine it. So it's definitely somebody new squad. It's probably Robert Garcia, who's trained a lot of Mexican fighters from the likes of Maidana and from the likes of um, uh, Garcia himself. So, but I like that's what's causing me a lot of concern, man. And on the step aside part, which is another thing, and this is all been concluded. There's been a lot of debate last week. Should he or should he not? Now I was flip flopping back and forth. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, you know what? He should. Next couple of days, like, nah, but but he shouldn't. Like I was flip flopping, and the reason why is because from one aspect, the step aside was, you know, was a way that he could work with his new trainer. But to be fair, his fight was the twenty fifth of September. Okay, that means that he could have got a new trainer in by early November, late December, uh, early or late December. Okay, which means that he could have had an extra month, two months to work with his new trainer. Okay. And he could have scheduled that fight in May. So that week would have made it what six, seven months to work with your new trainer. Okay, but instead of that, AJ took his time a little bit. So now I don't know who he's training with. But regarding the step aside, it would have been great for him to work with his new trainers. It would have been great for him to potentially fight, you know, a person who resembles Usyk's qualities and Usyk's traits. And then you know, came up against Usyk straight afterwards, you know, with a little bit more preparation, or winner of Usyk versus Fury, and I think if he would come up against Fury, I think he would probably would have beaten Fury. That's my opinion. If you lot disagree, let me know in the comment section below. But that's just in my opinion. Usyk is different it's the case. Fury, I think he's got a better chance of beating Fury. But that the problem with that one is that Fury could straight after the Usyk fight say you know what I'm calling it a day see you later guys we're gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna hang my gloves up but on the other hand if he wanted to face Usyk straight away with short uh, with a short period of time to prepare with not enough time with his trainer he could potentially lose to Alexander Usyk through lack for a lack of preparation he could be close but had he been with his trainer a little bit longer, he could have probably would have beaten Usyk the second time if he ends up losing. That's provided he ends up losing, okay? So, and then Fury beats Usyk and it runs away afterwards. Or beats White, it beats Usyk and then runs, runs off, you know, into the sunset afterwards. So, I was on the fence, okay? In the end, I probably thought, do you know what, overall, you guys got you just you just gotta go out on your shield. You just gotta go out on your shield. And you gotta face Alexander Usyk next. Okay? It is what it is. It's the circumstance we put ourselves in. 
you know, when AJ didn't prepare enough for the first, I, don't, I think he prepared physically, but mentally for the first fight, he wasn't all there. And sometimes you just got a you, you just got to swallow the pill that you've been given. So he's got to fight Alizade Usyk again for the second time, and hopefully he ends up winning. I I still have faith, um, but I wasn't as confident as about the first fight. I was sing I listen, I was so cocky. Yeah, it's unreal. It was unreal. But regardless of that, hopefully that the all of those announcements will be announced very very soon. Another thing, Jesse Wagner versus Liam Willie. No, Liam Willie. What's, what's his name? Liam. Ah, oh, Liam Smith. Liam Smith has been announced, okay, for the KTL versus uh, Manus Serrano on the card. What a fight. That's going to be a Manus Square Garden. Okay, I'm excited about that one. Liam Williams. Uh, Lee, I keep saying Liam Williams. That fight is this weekend. We're going to do a preview to that. Closer towards the end of the week. So stay tuned. But Liam Smith. Can he go to Sivaga's problems? It, it's intriguing. I, I don't necessarily think he could win. But it's very, very, very intriguing. Intriguing. So I can't wait to, to you know, to preview that whole card. I'm like, bro, I wish I was there, man. Madison Square Garden. That's the one thing, I want, one place I want to go, man. Like, AJ was fighting that bloody that toilet bowl stadium. Yeah, hopefully AJ fights at MSG, and then I can take my ass to MSG. Listen, bro. Yeah, I know Gig's done a show with um with Meek Mill out there, but. That's the place I want to go to, man. Definitely ticked off my bucket list. Another bit of news um, coming out today. Tommy, uh, Tommy, I was about to say Tommy Fumbles. <laughs> to be fair, you, you know, it is what it is. Tommy uh, Fury has been quite vocal for the fight with him and um, and Jake Paul. Jake Paul said, you know, you had your chance. You missed it. Is what it is. You've got to fight. you got to need to fight Jake. Um, what's his name? Jake Woodley, Tyra Woodley. You've got to fight Tyra Woodley. I'm bad at names today, guys. Usually I'm on point, but today I'm a little bit bad at names. Regardless, we move. Apparently, Jake, Jake Paul was saying that to Tommy Fury that you've got to fight um, Tyra Woodley before you can even fight me. And you know what? I'm here for it, man. Tommy, like, you let Tyson Fury get a medicine ball, smash it against your ribs. <laughs> you got to swallow this L, mate. you got to swallow this L. Regardless of that, we, we move, like the video, subscribe to the Gummers Boxing Peace on Prosperity. I'm going to see you guys in a bit. Peace.